Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about order of operations. In other words, in which order do I solve an expression or equation? But before we begin, we need to discuss what is an expression and what is an equation. What's the difference between an expression and an equation? Well, the only difference really is an equal sign. An expression is going to have several operations that need to be simplified without an equal sign. And an expression, I mean an equation, is going to have, it can have several operations, but it's going to have an equal sign. So you have to figure out what goes over here, what is on this side. So expression, no equal sign, an equation, an equal sign, both sides have to equal the same amount. That's basically the difference between the two. So let's go on to our order of operations. And we're going to be focusing on an expression today. But our order of operations, we have several things here. And it's going to start at the top. We're starting all the way at the top, and we work our way down when we solve the problems. So the first thing is the parentheses. You may see parentheses like this most of the time. But you also might see some brackets or these little other types of brackets. But basically, it's going to be a grouping of some sort, and you're saying it's like somebody cupping their hand over their mouth saying, do this section first. That's really what it is. It's somebody holding their hand here, and they're yelling at you to do this section first. So parentheses is first. Next is exponents. Now, if you're in fifth grade in Texas, we don't really cover exponents, but it does come after parentheses. And all an exponent is is like a little number up here, and it tells you to multiply the number that the larger number, or not larger in value, but the larger, physically larger number, and you're multiplying that number by itself that many times. So 2 to the 4th power is like saying 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And again, if you're in Texas, we won't cover that, but it does come right after parentheses. Next is multiplication and division. And what's really weird about this one is they're on the same level. They're not, multiplication's not on top of division like you do multiplication first. Division's not on top of multiplication because you do division first. But they are at the same level. They're both multiplicative, which means they're kind of like the inverse operations. They both are multiplying in some way, and you're just going to solve them from left to right. Now, what is different is that you might see the multiplication symbol like this. You might see a multiplication symbol like this because we have... Uh, we're going to start using letters if we're thinking algebra. We're going to use letters as part of our operations. And so we, and X is used a lot, so we probably won't use X as much for a multiplication symbol. So you might have a dot. You also might have a number next to a parentheses. So if a number is next to a parentheses, that automatically means that we're going to multiply. Same thing if we have a number next to a letter, we're going to, um, and we're going to multiply. That just means you can put them right next to each other. That means multiplication. So a number next to a parentheses or a number next to a letter means that we are going to multiply. And then division, uh, you're going to see your division symbol like this. You might see it as a fraction, the vaniculum, that line in the middle of a fraction. It means to divide. Hopefully we've covered that enough that you understand that. And then you have the regular multiplication, or sorry, the regular division with your dividend in the house and your divisor on the outside. And again, with multiplication and division, we go left to right. Whichever one comes first on the left, we're going to solve that one first. Addition and subtraction are the same way, left to right. They're both additive, and so they're both kind of like inverse operations of each other. So whichever one's on the left, you're going to solve that one first. So if subtraction's on the left, you're going to solve that one first. If addition's on the left, you're going to solve that one first. So again, Parentheses, exponents, then multiplicative, and multiplicative, then additive. So this is the order that we're going to solve them. So let's go ahead and see what that would look like. Let's go ahead and practice that. So we have our little expression here. So which one would we do first? Well, if we're going to look at this, which one would first? Well, do we have any parentheses? Yes, we have somebody saying, do the 2 plus 4 first. And since that is in the parentheses, we're going to do this one first. So notice that it's at the bottom here, but because it is in the parentheses, we're going to do that one first. So 2 plus 4 is 6, and I'm going to rewrite everything else just as it is. 
So in the parentheses, six plus eight times five. All right, so do we have any more parentheses? Well, we solved everything in the parentheses. So there's nothing really in the parentheses, but we have uh, we have no exponents, but we do have some multiplication and division. Now, what is what do we say happens when we have a number next to the parentheses? Well, that means we're going to multiply, right? So this is a multiplication problem, and this is a multiplication problem. I don't see any division problems, but since we have this as a multiplication, we're going to solve the one to the left first. So 6 times 6 is 36. So I'm going to put 36, and I'm going to rewrite everything else. Now, the temptation is to try to solve all of this at the same time, but that can make it a little difficult because you have to remember all the numbers. So it's better to underline, freaked out a little bit there, it's better to underline, write that, and then solve that little problem, and then rewrite everything else so we don't forget anything and we don't rewrite what we just did. All right, so now let's go what's next. We don't have any parentheses or exponents, but we do have one more multiplication problem. 8 times 5, which is 40. So I'm going to put 40 underneath that line, and then I'm going to rewrite everything else. 36 plus 40. And so what is left? We have one operation left. 36 plus 40, which is 76. So we have successfully simplify this expression. So we had all of these operations in it and we simplified it to just 76. And that's basically how we simplify expressions. Let's do another example over here. Let's do another example. Let's clear the board because this doesn't match. All right, here we go. So if we're looking at this one, what would be our first operation? Well, do we have anything in the parentheses? Yes, we have something in the parentheses. We have 2 plus 12. 2 plus 12 is inside the parentheses, so we're going to solve that first. We're going to say that is 14, and I'm going to rewrite everything else. So 4 plus, now we have the 7 next to parentheses. So what does that mean? I can put the parentheses around this, or I can just use a multiplication symbol. Divided by 7 minus 6. Okay. So now, what is our next step? We don't have any parentheses, we don't have any exponents, but we have some multiplication and division. Well, we have both multiplication and division. So which one happens on the left? Well, 7 times 14 happens on the left, so we are going to do that one first. So let's do that problem. 7 times 4 is 28, carry the 2. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 2 is 9. So 7 times 14 is 98, and then we're going to rewrite everything else just as it was. 4 plus 98 divided by 7 minus 6. And I'm being careful not to write, rewrite what I underlined. So now we're done with that operation. We have one left, one division problem left, one multiplicative. So we're going to go ahead and underline that. 98 divided by 7. Well, that we might have to do that one to the side. So 98 divided by 7. 7 goes into 9 one time. Subtract 7, uh, leaving 2 and 8. And 28 divided by 7, I know, is 4, because 4 goes into it. 28. So leaving 0 remaining, we don't have anything remaining, so it's just 14. What's okay? So then we are going to rewrite everything else just as it was. Now we're left with four plus four plus fourteen minus six. So now we can underline our next operation. So what do we do next? We're done with the multiplicative. Now we're at the additive, which is addition and subtraction. But which one happens on the left? Well. 4 plus 14 is on the left, so we're going to solve that one first, making that 18. And now we have 18 minus 6. 18 minus 6 is going to be our last operation. 18 minus 6 is going to be 12, 
and there you have it. And that is basically order of operations and how we solve problems. All right, if you have any questions, please ask your teachers, and hopefully you took these notes so you can use them in the future. Bye.